Today we're going to be crunching all of the numbers to try and mathematically determine when this Bitcoin bull cycle could peak and at what price. Today we're going to be trying to mathematically predict the next Bitcoin bull cycle peak. Back by popular demand, these are always some of our most popular videos and we're better to start than the Pi cycle. Top indicator we have here on Bitcoin magazinepro.com and as we can see over the past few weeks really due to bitcoin's incredibly positive price action we've actually seen this 111 day moving average begin turning to the upside so just a little bit of a background on the pi cycle top indicator if i just change this to the 24 hour resolution what this is doing is showing us two moving averages the 111 day which is this orange line and the 350 day moving average multiplied by two so the reason it's called the pi cycle top indicator is because these are the two integers that you can divide to to give you the closest number to pi so 3.142 and when they do cross so once the 111 day crosses above that 350 day moving average multiplied by a factor of two it has historically matched the bitcoin price peak within just a few days we can see both in the double cycle peak and the cycle before that in 2017 and here in 2021 as well within just a few days such as here in 2017 i think it was pretty much one day before and here in 2021 it called i think on the exact day the price cycle peaks, which is pretty exceptionally extraordinary considering it is just two moving averages. But what we can do is actually just slightly tweak this metric so it becomes the Pi cycle top and bottom indicator, or as I like to call it, just the Pi cycle oscillator, to give us kind of an indication into how close they are, not just by visually looking, but we can actually quantify how close these two moving averages are getting to crossing. And once this value gives us a once this oscillator, sorry, gives us a value of one, indicates that they have crossed. And that usually indicates, well, historically, it's always indicated when a price cycle peak has occurred. And like I've said, the 111 day has just started turning up recently after many months after we had this choppy price consolidation where this was actually moving down to so these moving averages were growing apart. But if we just zoom out again, we can see that this has now changed. The trend has changed. These are now moving closer together. So what we can do is basically just assume if conditions were to stay somewhat similar to what they have over the past few weeks that's the wrong drawing tool <laughs> if i get this one that if we were to continue this trend how could bitcoin's remainder of the bull cycle play out at what price could we potentially see a price cycle peak so the way i've done this is utilizing the bitcoin magazine pro api so you can either press the csv data download if you're a site subscriber or if you can use the api then you can have access to all of the raw data to do your own data manipulation so what i can do is just scroll all the way up here and this is the pi cycle top and bottom indicator and then i've just got a few additional metrics from this so i've derived the 111 day rate of change as well as the 350 day the oscillator rate of change as well as the potential price that we could see that at so if i just scroll all the way down hopefully not give away too many spoilers here what we can see is all the way down here so what we're looking at is from the 16th of november so if i just go quickly back to this chart here this is the date at which if i just zoom in this oscillator started really turning against the upside so here on the 16th of november is when this uptrend really started due to bitcoin's positive price action so what i've done is from that date which is to yesterday getting the monthly average oscillator rate of change so once i've figured that out which is this column here i've assumed that that average rate of change is going to continue going forward so as of today which is the 17th of december we can see that if we were to assume that this rate of change continued then we're only going to see a slight fractional increase every single day but then we can just extrapolate that and continue that data trend to see if we were to continue on that linear trend line to the upside when these two moving averages would actually cross which would indicate a bitcoin bull cycle peak so i just scroll all the way down here we can see we're into 2025 into summer of 2025 and it is down here so if i just zoom way in like this because it's pretty hard to see to see once this gives us a value of one which is on the 24th of august 2025 in our current trend this is when these two moving averages are going to cross and they would cross at a price of around two hundred and forty two thousand dollars. and if we scroll down just so you can see the chart here just to see roughly how it would look again this probably almost certainly isn't how this is going to play out we can see that if we just assume these follow the exact same trend they have been it looks like nothing we've seen before because data is constantly changing changing and evolving and the oscillator almost certainly isn't just going to move in a straight line to the upside but it is an interesting topic to look into and as we get closer and closer to these crossing these predictions are going to become more and more accurate last time we did this i think it said sometime in 
January 2026, but we did it previously and it predicted, I think, April 2025. But as we get close, it's kind of going to hone in and become more and more accurate. But what we can do just to kind of see before we look at price predictions how accurate this has been historically, because what we can do is just do pretty much the exact same analysis on the previous cycle. So what I did is going back to this indicator here, if we look to when this metric was at the same value we're at today in 2020 in the previous cycle, which was a value of 0.26, which was August 28th, 2020. That's the exact same value the oscillator is giving us today. So what I can do is take the trend of the month prior to this in this cycle, so the previous month's oscillator rate of change, and then just extrapolate that data to see how accurate it would have been if we did the exact same analysis at a similar point in the last cycle. So if I just scroll all the way back up here to 2020. What we can do is see this was the rate of change. This was the average rate of change on the 28th of August. So we're using the 29th of August onwards in 2020 for that data. And then, of course, we have the real data here. But in this column, what I've done is just show how it would have been if we did this analysis and had no idea what the future would look like. We can see, obviously, it's increasing at the exact same rate of change. But once we get to them actually crossing, which was here on the 31st of March 2021. This was actually only 13 days before the Bitcoin price action topped out. And this was at a value of $59,000-ish in the price action. And these crossed at a value of $60,000. So they were actually really close using this exact type of analysis in the previous cycle. Again, I don't think this is going to play out exactly the same. This cycle, it almost never does. But it is still interesting to note that this type of analysis, especially once we get close to that cycle peak, is going to become more and more useful. And historically, it has had some benefit to it as well. But what we can also do is look at how much Bitcoin has been above these two moving averages at the point of crossing. So, for example, if I just look at the previous two cycles, it's a bit messy here, actually. What we can see is when these moving averages crossed, they were at about $7,000, but the Bitcoin price was close to $20,000. So what we can do is measure the percentage returns above those two moving averages. And the same again here in 2021, these crossed at around $45,000, but the Bitcoin price was, like we saw previously, around $60,000. So what we can do is take those percentage returns above the moving averages, which have been diminishing all throughout Bitcoin's history. Each cycle, we get a slightly smaller percentage return above that and see how that might look for being above the moving averages this cycle. Obviously, we're assuming they're going to be at $242,000 and the price would have to be higher than that for these to actually cross. But if we just scroll down here, what I've done is somewhere here. I'll zoom in again. We can see, so it's it's a little confusing. I kind of know what's going on roughly. The first cycle, we were 440% above the moving averages. The second cycle, we were 399%. We were actually only 299, you have to take away 100%. So for example, in the most recent cycle in 2021, we were only 32% above those moving averages, but the way I've calculated it, it's 132. So we can see this has actually decreased every single cycle. In the second cycle, it was only 87% of the excess returns. In the third, it was 86, then 69, then 18%. So what we can do is assume if we were to have a similar diminishing return pattern into this cycle, but looking at the previous diminishing return factor, Again, if I'm not explaining this too well, I apologize. It makes sense in my head. So if we saw 32% excess returns in the previous cycle, then this cycle, we're going to assume it's just going to be slightly less than that. But we can say if it was 87% of that, then it'd be 28% above those moving averages or 128%. If it was only 18% of that 32% returns we saw last cycle, then we'd only be about 5.9% above those moving averages at the time of crossing. But they would work out to the following prices if I just zoom way in and scroll over here. $311,865 if we're to be 28% above those moving averages in line with the diminishing return factor of a second cycle, but still following the diminishing return pattern, looking at the percentage gains above the moving averages from our previous cycle. God, there's a lot of words going on today. If we were to follow the second cycle, it'd be 310,000. The third cycle, it'd be 297,000. And if we were to follow the previous cycle's factor of diminishing returns above the moving average, we would see the Bitcoin price at around $256,700 on August 24th, 2025. Also, if you haven't already, please don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications to ensure you're receiving all of our content as soon as it's released. And make sure to check out all the resources we've discussed today, as well as the many more that are all available on BitcoinMagazinePro.com, your number one source for Bitcoin analysis. So just to summarize, I feel like I even I need a summary today. There was a lot of maths involved. The Bitcoin Pi Cycle Top Indicator has historically marked 
market peak timings within just a few days. And looking at the pie cycle top and bottom, or what I like to call the pie cycle oscillator, it allows us to visualize how close that top may be. And by taking into account the current data trend we can see through BTC's positive price action, we're on track to peak on August 24th, 2025. So we'll have most of 2025 still a very positive bullish price action if this is to play out. And given the fact that those moving averages would cross at around $242,000 and assuming the pattern of diminishing returns continues, we could see a Bitcoin price peak of somewhere between 250, I think it was 256, to around $300,000. I think it was 310, but roughly in that region. What's $10,000 between friends? But like I said, do not take any of this as gospel. Well, every time we do this analysis, it does change slightly. Next time I do this analysis, it's going to change slightly. And every single cycle is different and unique. Given the supply and demand economics of institutions, Michael Saylor coming in buying as much Bitcoin as they can, maybe this cycle is different. Maybe we do get a super cycle or maybe everything stays the same. Who knows? All we can do is see this type of analysis, continue to do it. And as it gets more and more accurate, it'll be more and more useful to help us try and improve our investing and analysis to try and take a little bit of profit and rotate into other assets towards that Bitcoin price price cycle peak. If you like this video, then please visit BitcoinMagazinePro.com where our analytics help you to cut through the noise to make informed data-driven decisions about Bitcoin. Whether 150 live chats, personalized indicator alerts, in-depth crypto industry reports, API access, and more, all for a fraction of the standard industry price. And let me know what your thoughts are on this type of mathematical prediction analysis. Do you think it's useful and we should continue to do this every month or two or three, however often we need to do it? Or do you think that it is kind of just bit of randomness. As we can see, it did have some effectiveness in the previous cycle, so it'll be interesting to continue doing this going forward. But as I said, if you hate it, if you love it, let me know. I look forward to reading replies to them. Thank you all very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.